could be just a hologram, exactly what it is. And the most dense of things, rocks, mountains, however kind of they may be indestructible, they are at their base form an energetic information field. The, the more dense the energy, the lower the frequency, the denser and more solid the form appears to be. And uh, Nikola Tesla, the genius from which so much came, one of the great scientific geniuses of modern times, who in, in fact, in, in effect, gave us the electrical system. He gave us radar uh, because it was stolen from him. And um, he could see beyond the physical that we perceive. And he said, the day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, um, it will be, uh, make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of our existence. Why? Because you go to the source of the reality instead of the decoded um, expression of that reality. You go to the source, not the expression of the source. So we live in this cosmic internet. Uh, on one level, it operates on an electrical, electromagnetic level. Of course, the brain is working electrically as it interacts with it. And the reason that animals can uh, be so sensitive to things that humans can't be, because they read the newspapers and watch Simon Cowell, um, but is because they have not gone through this system of programming. So they are naturally sensitive to these information fields and can pick up changes in it, which is why animals can uh, feel earthquakes coming before they come. So what is the internet? People say, well, it's, it's like pictures and texts and colors on a screen. Well, yes, it is, but only on the screen. Everywhere else, it's electronic circuits and all that gadgetry. What is television? Well, it's pictures on a screen. Yes, it is, but only on the screen. Everywhere else, television, in the analog sense, is frequency fields and or, you know, the electrical kit that they do now with digital. And our body, mind, the body mind as I call it, is like a computer system which allows us to experience this reality. And that is just like sitting in a in an office, the person at the desk that can see the big picture is consciousness beyond the program, consciousness beyond mind, consciousness beyond the reality that we perceive, and that is experiencing the reality we perceive. If you cut that from that and isolate that in and of itself, which is what the program's designed to do, you detach people from their true self and their true perception of self. That's the thinker, the brain, the thinker, working it out. That's the knower. And if you detach the thinker from the knower, then the thinker is left helpless to have its thinking programmed by that which has been responsible for the disconnection of the isolation. So, if you program that level of self that's directly experiencing this reality, body-mind, with all this programming, you disconnect it from this, and that's how infinite consciousness can become an idiot. The brain is not who we are. It is a processor of information and a communicator of information. As this man rightly said, looking for consciousness in the brain is like looking inside a radio for the announcer. The radio is just decoding information. That's what the brain body is doing. We are conscious in a very narrow band we call conscious. That's what we perceive and think we're awake. But beyond that is the unconscious, the subconscious, which goes on and on into infinity. And the idea is to isolate the conscious from the greater self. So what we are in this reality is simply a point of attention which the body focuses into a tiny uh, range of free, tiny range of frequencies we call the world. I'll get into that in a second. A point of attention. But if we um, get caught in the program, 
that point of attention is so focused on here that we lose connection with the greater self and all the other insight, knowledge, awareness that is open to us when we connect with it. Not some guy in a spaceship, our greater uh, self, our greater consciousness. Consciousness is, what I call consciousness, is like the ocean. Whereas mind, it's the same substance, but it is far more limited. Like ice is the same substance as water, but it's in a completely different and more limited state. And if we get caught in that and disconnected from that, big trouble. And, you know, when you look at the, the, the oceans, they say it's the South China Sea, they say it's the South Atlantic, the Indian Ocean, the North Atlantic, same bloody water. Same water, but what we do is we give our water, our infinite self, names, like Ethel Jones and Arthur Smith, and we give them um, identities without realizing that we are just points of attention within one infinite, eternal consciousness. We are like the white waves in an ocean. They look different to the rest of the ocean, but they're just a different expression of the ocean. This is a fantastic picture. This sums up humanity. We are expressing our point of attention as a uniqueness, which is wonderful. A unique personality, a unique person, a unique perspective, a unique point of attention. But at that time, we are connected to all the other points of attention in infinite awareness, which in the end are all us and they are, and we are all them. And so, when we go to war, we go to conflict, we are fighting ourselves. You hit yourself around the head with a baseball bat, they put you away. But we're doing that all the time because we've got caught in the illusion of the fact that we have space, empty space between us, and we're all individual to the point where we're not connected. The ocean is the droplet, the droplet is the ocean. Drop the droplet in the ocean, where does the droplet end and the ocean start? The idea of the conspiracy is to keep that droplet disconnected from the ocean. And when they do that, we have the world that we live in. Great line, Leonard Cohen. If you don't become the ocean, you'll be seasick all your life. And so many people feel this, this ache, this, this sense of disconnection, this sense of longing that they can't put words to. Because one part of them, one, one level of them knows that we're all one. Everything is all one. Leonardo da Vinci, learn how to see, realize that everything connects to everything else. It's an ocean. We are a point of attention, but we are the ocean. My God, that's, that's what we are. We're the freaking ocean ocean of infinite consciousness. What a job they've done to persuade us we're Ethel from the store. Near-death experiences of, as of, of experience this. So often the, 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 the common themes of what they say is incredible. How they leave the body and some, so, suddenly past, present and future are all happening at the same time, in the same moment. How they have multiple levels of awareness at the same time. In the body, they had one level of awareness. Because the body focuses us in these frequencies, locks us in like a computer. Uh, from one of my books, the fear of death comes from the ignorance of life. There is no death. There's just a removal from the vehicle into consciousness, in awareness of itself again. But you get people frightened of death and they'll give their power away to doctors and chemo, freaking therapy and all of it because they want to stay alive because they fear death. There is no death. There's just a change of point of attention. That's all it is. Point of attention, point of attention. I'm terrified. If people say to me, don't you frighten, they'll kill you. Well, well, well so they kill me, all right? I'll leave the body and I go, to, oh God, I'm terrified, I'm terrified. Oh my goodness, it's such a nightmare becoming all that is, has been and ever can be in full awareness of itself. Um, <laughs> oh. If the doors of perception were cleansed, everything would appear to man as it really is infinite. The, this guy was, you know, from the 18th century, William Blake. I mean, this, this is universal knowledge through history. 
So we have a visible universe, that which we can see and bring into some kind of form, and we have an invisible universe, which is everything else. And the visible universe is so tiny, it is funny. This is mainstream science. They talk about dark energy, dark matter. I see that slightly differently, but the principle is the same, what you can see and what you can't see. Um, so you have this massive area of stuff they say exists in this universe, which we can't see. You then have light, electromagnetic spectrum, etc., which is 0.005% of what they say exists in this universe, and visible light, which is the only frequency band that we can decode into a visual reality, is a fraction of the 0.005%. We have an expert. What we know is... <laughs> what? Madness. Um, so... This is the visible spectrum within the electromagnetic spectrum. Look at it, it's tiny. And that's all that we can see in what we call the world. You say to most people, can you see everything in the space you're looking at? Oh yeah, mate, you can't see that much of it. So, we are in a frequency band. We call it the world, we call it reality, but there are other frequency bands interpenetrating this one, like radio stations and television stations, sharing the same space. And what you perceive is what you can decode, what you are, are, are um, decoding. And so through the body, the body, we, we perceive in a visual sense what the body can decode, which is this little band of frequencies. You go outside the body, now you're perceiving much greater frequencies, and thus your reality changes. If you wish to understand the universe, said Tesla, think of energy, frequency, and vibration. Exactly. So, our point of attention holds us in this reality unless we're open to consciousness. Because what happens is if you come into this reality, this visible light reality, and you hold that connection to consciousness beyond this reality, you have everything you need. You have the information coming through the senses to give you a fix on what's happening around you. But you have the big picture that's outside of this reality, that's not programmed by its perceptions and its sense of limitation, which can then uh, feed you insight, inspiration, intuition, to give you insight beyond that which you are directly experiencing. But you get disconnected from that big problem. You're now trying to get your entire fix on reality from the reality you are in. And if a network controls that reality and that information that's coming at you, they are going to program your sense of reality for life. 